what we're trying next now is levitation from within a ring of 16 magnets. So I put 16 magnets all certain polarity up on this big ring. And the reason I did that is because I'm matching this crop picture from Milk Hill 1999. So UFO rising from a ring of magnets with spiral stuff going through it. And here's the little UFO man smiling at us. And here's the ring of magnets. And this was what was observed in the Herb Shermer UFO case 1967. Now we're going to see if putting put insulation paper, we're going to put the same spiral down inside the ring of magnets and we're going to turn on the power and see what happens. It jumps up. Look, we levitate right out of the center of a ring of magnets. Now if I reverse the leads, change the direction of DC power about 2 amps, so 2 volts, 10 to 20 amps, nothing happens. It goes slightly down you look carefully. Then I have to reverse the leads again. Just change the direction of DC power just to confirm. Jumps up. Jumps up. And this is what was observed in the Milk Hill crop drawn in crops, the Milk Hill crop picture of 1999. Ring of magnets. Stuff spinning inside of it. And it's the basis for UFO propulsion. And here's Herb Shermer telling how UFO works that way. And this is how a friend of mine sat in this crop picture for 15 minutes with an intelligent ball of light talking to it. But that's another story. Let's watch it go up one more time. Up, 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 up the daisy. We'll study this more soon. Now we're going to compare what we just got with the ring of magnets versus what we did earlier with a single ceramic magnet. So we're going to put the disc again over our ceramic magnet below 145 millimeter. Speaker magnet. We'll put the insulation paper here. Put the disc here hovering with six things. It took to a DC power supply exactly what made it go up inside of a ring of 16 magnets and watch what happens. Now it goes down. So the direction of current to make it up or go down has been reversed for the ceramic magnet versus the ring of magnets. Now if we reverse the fields, put the leads the other way, it goes up. That's what we saw earlier. Now that's the same as what we're getting for the ring of magnets, but we have a 200 disc aluminum disc, 3 millimeter thick, over a 145 ceramic magnet, and that goes up or down and also we have a ring of 16 magnets and it goes up or down but to make it go up or down respectively the leads have to be reversed in one case versus the other and we'll explain why that is in a minute. Now let's confirm the existence of reverse field magnetic levitation for a second time. We've hooked it up again and you can see it clearly jumps up. We have a ring of 16 50 millimeter magnets over an empty space, a piece of insulation paper leads going to the small 2 volt 10 amp power supply, aluminum disc 3 millimeters thick, 4 spiral turns. Now the key thing about this is the field make it go up is exactly the reverse of the field from the center of the ceramic magnet that was only 145 millimeters wide. The reason is the magnetic field is reversed inside the ring, so it makes perfect sense. However, the key point also here is the little lift magnets to hold it up above the ring. These six little lift magnets have to be right close to the edge of the other magnet. So that's north and that's north. That's north and that's north. So they give a very slight upward repulsion before the current's turned on. You put them in the middle, it doesn't really work because the field's different there. So we have to have a little edge to edge repulsion to make it less lift. And this comes from the milk hill crop picture of May 1999. We see a ring of magnets, current spinning around inside, and things lifting over an image of a UFO in the landscape. Here's a schematic image of it. 
here's how it powers a UFO. This is drawn in 1998, the little Graylian face a bit musing. I think he used electromagnets here. You see the leads? And you can see the same thing. And this is what Herbert Shermer found when he was riding in a UFO in 1967. They told him it was powered by reversible electromagnetism. So this is reversed electromagnetism. Let's look at it again. Reversed electromagnetism, reversible electromagnetism. Do you think it might be the same thing? I certainly do. We'll do more experiments soon. Here you can see again the ring of 16 magnets we used to make it go up and down. And also the ceramic magnet of 145 we used to go up and down. Now this ring of magnets is 300 wide with 50 meter magnets, 200 millimeters in the center. The ceramic magnet is 145. The interesting thing is the ceramic magnet repels the center of the disc. So the field at the center of the disc is opposite that of the ceramic magnet. So if we repel upward using this magnet with certain leads, we're going to have to reverse the leads to repel upward on this magnet because the field is one is north south and the other is south north. And this is called reverse field levitation and it's very important for UFOs. We can do the same thing also from a ring of just eight 50 magnets. If you put the lift magnets of the same polarity very close to the center, put the fields weaker because the reverse field on the center is smaller, up and down. Let's just look to see that ring of eight 50 magnets under, sitting under it. There they are. Just eight magnets, all 50. The reverse field on the center is much smaller. So when we try to lift, the effects are weaker. And when we reverse the fields, it goes down. So a ring of 16 magnets is better than 80. We always have to have the lift magnets of the same polarity as the outside, just inside the edge of the ring. Okay, as a final experiment, I'm trying to the same disc experiment over a ring of just six 50 millimeter magnets. We're doing reverse field lift right in the center with four little magnets. <coughs> I'll show you the magnets in a minute. And when I turn on the field, you can see it lifts up quite nicely. And if I reverse the leads, it goes down, reverse the leads again, goes up. Let's just see the magnets below. And all we have here are six 50 millimeter magnets. So we're repelling off that tiny little reverse field in the center. So the reverse field doesn't have to be that big. And this is based on the milk hill crop circle of this. 1999 and Herb Shermer's observation of a ring of magnets around a UFO in 1967. So we're really set to fly if we study this further.